you think of Christmas, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Now, we would all, as Christians, say Jesus or perhaps the birth of Jesus. But if we're real honest for a second, maybe perhaps the things that come to your mind are the stress of the holidays. Maybe there's dysfunction in your family. Perhaps um, the stress of presents or of hosting parties. Perhaps your job is really busy toward the end of the year. Maybe you don't know the future of your employment come the next year. There's a lot of thoughts that come to mind when we think about Christmas. And as I thought about it leading into these themes of Advent, the things that are typically on our radar, if we're real honest, are exactly the opposite of tonight's themes. The themes of peace and of joy. And that's what we're going to hang out and talk about tonight is this idea of that Jesus Christ came to bring peace on earth and good news of great joy. I'm so looking forward to discussing this with you tonight. We're going to be again in Luke chapter 2. We're going to be reading in verse 8 um, tonight. And we're going to talk about this idea of what it means to have peace and joy. You see, the world was waiting on the Savior. The world was waiting on him to return. We are still waiting on the Savior. And in those moments of waitings, we can feel distressed. We can feel a lack of peace, a lack of joy. And you see, as we come to this moment in Scripture, that is what we're seeing is the people of Israel were waiting on the Word of God. We talked about that last week. And in the moments of waiting, this distress that they feel waiting on God... These angels enter this well-known scene amongst these shepherds. So read with me, starting in verse 8. It says this, In the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And an angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into the heaven... The shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they they made known, saying that they had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. As I read that, you may or may not can almost recite it. It's very popular. We hear it many times around this year. But if we're honest, perhaps we read a great story about the angels and the shepherds, and we fail to look deeper as, at what the angels came to bring news of in the Christmas season. You see, tonight we're going to talk about the themes of joy and peace, and the reason we're talking about these themes is because if you're real honest, you can miss out on these themes in the midst of your life, but especially in the midst of December. The first theme we're going to talk about is joy, and what we see here is that Christmas centers Upon this idea of good news and great joy. The angel came to the shepherds and said, I bring you good news of great joy. We, we just read it. If you, if you think about this story, many times you just hop right all over that. Because we know that good news of great joy, what is it? What's the birth of Jesus, right? But what do these words really tell us? And what does it have to do with this idea of this theme of joy? Well, you see, this idea of good news, it directly translates into the gospel. The story of Jesus being born 
and ultimately coming to the earth to bring redemption for the sins of the people. This idea that Jesus' birth was great news, and don't we all need some good news in life? I don't know where you are tonight, but I know this, you need some good news. And when there's good news in our lives, it automatically provides joy for us. And you see, so many times, I know this is a cliche, but if we're not careful, Christmas can be about a bunch of good things, but perhaps not about the good news, the gospel. You see, these shepherds, first of all, in verse 8, he, the angel comes to shepherds. This reminds us of the idea, not just of humble beginnings, as we talked about last week, but the idea shepherds were the lowliest of the lowly because they were unclean. They were performing a job that was considered unclean, unholy, and unspiritual by the people of Israel. And the angel came to the shepherds to show us that Jesus came for sinners, just like you and me. And we're reminded of this in the shepherd's story that Jesus came for the least of these, those who had messed up their lives, those whose society thought were the furthest from God. That is who this baby came for. And in the midst of December, if you want to have joy, you must first remember who you are and who Jesus came for. And that is that we are broken, we're messed up, we're fallen. Even the best of us have are, are nothing in the sight of God. And Jesus came just for that. So no matter how broken you see your life tonight, Jesus came onto the scene so that you might have good news. This idea that upon the presence of God, you see the angel coming and the shepherds afraid. Among the glory of God, we all are afraid because none of us live up to the standard that God has set. And that wouldn't bring great joy except for the baby Jesus. Except for the idea that God sent his son so that we don't have to be afraid. Just like the angel said, do not fear. Tonight, you don't have to be afraid of God. You don't have to look to him and feel so much lesser than him because of Jesus, because of the baby coming to earth. So instead of being filled with fear, we can be filled with great joy. This idea of good news of great joy. How can we have great joy in the midst of so much stress? Think about it for a second. Think about our world today. Think about the constant news cycles. All the bad news that you hear if you listen to the noise. Maybe perhaps the bad news is not from the noise of the world, but perhaps it's in your own life. Maybe you're facing something that seems like it will never get better. How do you have great joy during this season of Christmas when everything around you seems so disturbed? And how will there be peace on earth when we know the earth is constantly groaning for peace? There has never been a season of true peace in this world. So how does it happen? Well, it happens when we remember that we were lowly sinners and Jesus came so that we didn't have to stay there. It happens when we remember who we were and we accept Christ in our life. And if you are a child of God, if you are a Christian tonight watching this, then you must remember the judgment that was due upon your life, and the debt that was paid by Jesus Christ. To give an example, it would be as if this Christmas, someone came into your life and whatever the debt load you have in your current financial picture, they just completely forgave it this Christmas season. Wouldn't that be a blessing? How about some good news, huh? If that was the Christmas gift, that your mortgage, your credit cards, whatever the debt you have, it's gone. Coming January, you no longer have to pay it. Would that be good news for your life? If you don't have a debt load, look at it this way. Maybe that purchase you want, somebody's already paid for it. That new car you wanted, the ticket's already been written. And you ultimately have a gift beyond compare because of someone choosing to pay the price. Well, that's good news and that brings about some great joy. And what if we remember the debt that we have under the glory of God and his judgment and we remember that Jesus paid it all, you can have joy no matter what happens in your life. You see, Christians often fail to have joy when they forget that their judgment has already been paid for. 
And this Christmas, all those things that stress you, the things that bring, that destroy your joy, those things have nothing on the debt that was paid when this baby came to earth. And you see, ultimately, if we're not careful, we can be a little bit like the ungrateful servant in Matthew 18. Jesus gives this parable where a king does forgive a great debt. And then the servant goes out, and what does the servant do? He tries to collect the lesser debts that were owed him right after the king has forgiven his debt, which was much greater. And Jesus warns us that we don't need to be like that ungrateful servant. Well, why ultimately was that servant ungrateful? Because he forgot about what the king did for him. Tonight, as you sit there with whatever you're facing, remember, Jesus came this Christmas to bring you great joy. How? By remembering the gospel. Remembering that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the grave, not so you'd have a lot of presents this Christmas, not so you'd have some great family parties and all the things that we love. Those things are fine. But Jesus came, he died, and he rose ultimately so that your debt would be paid. So that you might not have to fear the glory of God because ultimately you could know that he has paid your debt clean and clear. And that brings ultimately good news of great joy. So if you want joy tonight, perhaps look to Jesus. But it's not just about joy we see in this passage. The other thing we see is that the angels ultimately promise peace among those with whom he is pleased. Peace among those with whom God is ultimately pleased. We see that the, the angels tell the shepherds that, that there would be great peace on earth, right? But this idea of peace has, a, has kind of a hesitation to it. Among those with whose God's pleased. How is God pleased with us? How do we get this peace that God brings? Is God pleased with the world? If so, when will there be peace on earth? You see, this qualification on with whom he is pleased is pretty intentional. First thing you need to see is this peace that we're talking about, it doesn't necessarily mean you get to go live on an island by yourself. It's not necessarily a quiet, silent night as we sing about in, in, in the uh, great hymn of, of Christmas. Um, so if you've got this idea that like to get peace in your life, it's going to take you to go buy a private island. Yes, I'm looking at you, my mom. She says that a lot. Um, listen, that is not going to truly bring you peace. Look at what happens. Um, before she talk, the angel talks about peace, it says, the angel appeared, first the angel, they were afraid of it. Then the angel appeared with a multitude of heavenly hosts. So picture this, the shepherds around their campfire, however many of them there are, with their sheep right out on the countryside. That, to me, sounds like some peace. But then, angel appears, right? And they're immediately afraid because they saw the glory of God. And then not only one angel, right? You think that'd be bad enough if you're afraid of one angel? A multitude of the things you're afraid of all of a sudden come on the scene, all right? So take your worst fear in life, all right? Your worst bad dream. If it's, let's say it's a spider, right? Multiply that by a thousand, right? So the, the shepherds are not having this silent night that we sing about, right? Sometimes like they are having all of a sudden this incredible, miraculous, but yet fearful moment because no one has ever experienced angels like this on earth as far as I know a multitude of angels so what we've got to see there is that peace is not always necessarily about silence peace instead is about the presence of God and sometimes peace means that we're in the midst of a bunch of people a bunch of chaos a bunch of things going on but yet the presence of God is right there in the middle of our lives. The reason I bring this up is this. If your natural um, idea of peace is to retreat, if you think tonight that I mean peace on earth means for you to retreat into your own little room, and I'm looking at you introverts, right? That is not necessarily the peace of Scripture. Instead, we see the peace focused in the midst of this chaotic scene all about the glory and the presence of God. And the glory and the presence of God in your life, no matter how chaotic it might seem tonight, there is peace 
when the presence of God shows up. So the multitude's there, right? And they start singing and they sing glory to God in the highest in verse 14. And on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. All right, so there's this idea I mentioned earlier. How is there peace when God has to be pleased? We know from scripture that the people of Israel many, many times made God angry, right? Because they didn't do what God said. We know there's this silent moment before this happened where God's not even there, right? So he's obviously, right, not, not even saying if he's pleased. And then in our own lives, when we mess up, how can we have peace when we know we fail God? If not on a daily basis, we know consistently our lives, we mess up before him. How in the world could we ever have peace? Well, go back to step one. It plays off this idea of the good news, the gospel. God is pleased with us because Jesus came as a baby. Because he sent his son to the world, he can be pleased. So how do we have peace? That is by accepting the gift of his son. You see, it doesn't mean that we have to get away from the chaos. In fact, I would tell you that you probably will never get away from the chaos. You may have moments of peace in your life when it comes to some silence or some quiet time, but that's not going to be the majority of your life. You're not going to be living somewhere where there is only the absence of chaos. Instead of looking for that this Christmas, how about looking for God? How about looking for the glory of God in your work, in your relationships? Perhaps if you're headed toward chaotic in your family life this Christmas, maybe you need to be asking God, where is he showing up in the midst of that? How can the good news of great joy be a part of that? How does God factor into All these things. And if we're really honest, even among good Christian households, you can blow through Christmas and the glory of God not even be present among you. So if you want peace, perhaps you need to evaluate the question of where is God's glory? And ultimately, are we living in a way that is pleasing for him? And it starts by accepting Jesus Christ, his son. And then it moves on from there by living for him. And by being about the things that he's about. And when we do that, there's great peace. Great illustration I'll give you, I wrote down, I thought about for a second. And this idea of chaos and not getting away from it. I have a five-year-old who loves to talk. In fact, uh, one of our volunteers in the booth was just telling me about her interactions in aftercare. And how she loves to talk about what she's doing. And, um, and I, I, I'm not much of a talker. I mean, I, I talk for a living, but when it comes to home life, I'm a, I'm a man of few words. And so Shiloh, my daughter, always wants to tell me about everything going on. And at times, if I'm not careful, my idea of great peace in our home is the absence of talking, being able just to sit and not have conversation. But I've realized as she's growing up, for, for us as a family, The absence of talking doesn't always mean that there's peace in our home. Perhaps for my child, the way she's wired, peace comes by being able to talk to her father. You see where I'm going with this? Perhaps for you, talking to your father, God, is where peace comes from. Maybe it's not silence that you need or a silent night. Maybe instead you need to turn your full attention in the midst of the chaos to God. And just like my five-year-old, tell God everything that's going on. No matter how small, no matter how insignificant it might seem to you, tell God that. And perhaps this Christmas, when you do that, you'll see some peace start to enter your life. So we have good news for great joy. We have great peace. And ultimately, I want us to conclude with this statement. And we're going to talk about at the end of this chapter what we see there. And this statement is that joy and peace during Christmas arrives ultimately when we find Jesus in the midst of everything else. So I've been saying this the whole time. If you've not been listening, right, this might not seem as obvious. But if you're listening to what I've been saying, this last point is pretty obvious. Joy and peace comes. When we find Jesus in the middle of everything else this Christmas. And that is ultimately the way that you're going to have good news of great joy. And you're going to see peace in your life 
It is by finding Jesus. You see what happens at the end of this chapter, starting in verse 15, the angels are gone, all right? And I'm sure the, the shepherds were probably a little bit okay with that. I mean, they had this incredible moment, but I know there was great fear. They didn't know what was going on. All right, all of a sudden, back to where they were before. And they had a choice to make. Do they go back to work? Tending the sheep? Sitting around the fire? Doing life as normal? Or the choice they ended up making was the right choice. It says in scripture, they made haste to Bethlehem. They made haste to Bethlehem. They were told where Jesus was and they ran for him with all their strength, with everything they have to find Mary and Joseph. I don't know if you see where I'm going with this, but I'll spell it out for you. You have a couple of choices this Christmas. And really for your life. If you don't find great joy and peace every day in your life, you can keep doing life as normal. Keep running the same routines, the same programs, everything the same way. Or you can run to Jesus. You could run to, yes, that baby in Bethlehem. The adult, the prophet, the king, the Messiah, the one who died and rose from the grave, who's paid the price for your sin and mine so that we might know God. You can keep doing it the same way or you can run on a daily basis to Jesus. We have to make haste to Jesus, even in the midst of a month that talks a lot about him. Because the month, if you're not careful, can be filled with a lot of things that have nothing to do with him. Make haste to Jesus. But there's one last little tidbit I want to give you before we close. Not only do we make haste to Jesus, not only do we run toward him, but I love this verse 19 where it says, Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. All these things were happening, and it's like Mary was taking them and putting them into a treasure chest, putting them in her heart into a keepsake, trying to remember I don't know about you, but in my life, there's a few moments I hope I always remember. I know sometimes we're not given that grace at the end of life, but I pray that I'll always remember moments in my life, like my wedding day, or perhaps when I graduated from college in the seminary. Perhaps it's great moments that are just more personal with friends and family around supper tables, conversations. Uh, there's a few baptisms in this baptistry I want to remember forever that I was a part of. There are things in life that I want to hold on to. But you know, and, and some of those things, by the way, have to do with Jesus. But how about this December? Along with those, those great treasures of our lives, perhaps we treasure up some truths about Jesus. If you want to have great peace and joy, there's nothing better than to store up some things in God's word, some promises that he's given you along the way of your life. Or if you don't have any, perhaps it's a great time to start asking God to give you new ones. Some promises from his word, some sentences from him that you can treasure up in your heart. You see, Mary treasured. And then the next verse, verse 20, the shepherds, they glorified God for what they had done. You see, when you make haste toward Jesus, a response has to happen. It's either going to be treasuring or it's going to be worshiping. But when you make haste toward Jesus, these things in our lives, they bring great peace and great joy. So joy and peace at Christmas, I wrote as I close. How do we do it? Perhaps for you and your family, maybe you want to talk about Jesus more. Maybe you need to share the good news, or perhaps you just need to have some conversations that will fill your life with Jesus. Perhaps you need to talk to God, talk to Jesus, pray to him. Maybe that will bring you some peace and joy. Perhaps you need to think about him more. Maybe you need to spend, yes, I'm going to give you introverts the, the relief here, some quiet time. <laughs> Where you get to think about Jesus and what he has done. Store up promises from his word. Or maybe, maybe you need to do your best to orient the things that you do around Jesus. Perhaps for opening the gift, we open up God's word. Perhaps as you sit down to eat, you pray. 
I don't know what it looks like for you. I don't know what your routines, your rhythms are, but I know this. The shepherds could have gone back to business as usual. And for you in your life, if you're missing out on joy and peace, if you do business as usual, you'll miss out on it all December long. But perhaps you want to respond tonight like they did. And you want to run straight toward Jesus. If you don't know him, perhaps you need to accept him for the first time. And if you do know him, then maybe you need to run toward him and treasure him. I don't know what it looks like for you, but I know this. My prayer as we planned these two weeks was that you might feel the hope, the faith, the peace, and the joy that that baby Jesus came to bring this Christmas to you. So I pray that you will feel that as you go toward your December. And as a reminder as we close, next week, don't miss out. We're going to have a special time in this room, same time, 6 o'clock, and we are going to celebrate with our Bethel Family Housing Partners. We're going to provide Christmas presents for them, but as we've been talking about these last two weeks, they are going to hear and you're going to hear the hope of Christmas from Pastor Michael, Carly, and her team. We're going to have a great time in this room. So you don't want to miss next week with us as we close out our Wednesday nights this December and be a part of our missions opportunity here at Calvary this December. Thanks for tuning in tonight, and I hope you go out tonight with peace and joy in your life.